David. Michelangelo's marble sculpture is often called one of the most beautiful pieces of art ever crafted by a humankind. A lot of artists before him gave up because of the block of marble was too narrow. It was extremely tricky to work with. So, how did he pull off such a marvelous creation? The man was literally that talented. But in order to apply your talent, you need the right platform and tools. And he had some of very handy tools to help. He first removed large part of the rock with a point chisel and a mallet to give it the desired basic shape. Then using the tooth chisel, a drill and other finer tools to integrate details were carved into place. Once he finished, the statue was polished to attain a shiny glow and voila. So David was poised and ready. You see a worker's tools are just as important as their talent. So even Michelangelo wouldn't have been able to craft without them. In fact, tools are even more important today because of human advancement. We live in cities with the towering skyscrapers. Everyone uses automobiles to travel from one place to another and many other machines that make day-to-day -day living much easier and more efficient. Most of these items are made from metals and other hard materials that are not easy to work with. So having tools really help make this task easier. But wait, who builds the tools that we need? Other tools, of course. To be more specific, machine tools. They are devices that are used to remove and carve materials from metal or wooden components. Lathes, mulling machines, drilling machines, and grinding machines are some of the most commonly used machine tools. Like most things in 21st century, machine tools are automated too. So this is done through a CNC machine or computer numerical control machine. Once coded, a machine tool can work independently, performing multiple operations at a single station. They are capable of selecting the right tools based on the job that has to be done. These machine tools are like a modern day sculpture of mass production. They more or less follow the same process a sculpture would except they can do it faster. Hi, my name is Gautam, working as Solution Consultant. During my eight years of professional experience, I was involved in different projects with respect to design and manufacturing domain. And I'm going to walk you through how a machine tool can build another machine tool. More precisely, how a machine tools can help make milling cutter. Machine tools begin their work with roughing operation. It involves removing the bulk of excess material from the workpiece in every pass. Every time the tool touches the material, cuts the material and separates the material in the form of chips, it counts as a pass. Basically, it's every time the material meets the tool. For roughing, the surface might not be smooth and shiny, neither are the cuts are perfect. In fact, the surface finish will not be great due to the higher feed rate and depth of cut. To make sure that too much material is not removed, the diameter of the cutting tool is always set to a value that is smaller than the mark value. So at this point, we have a rough object in place. After roughing operations, finishing tools are used to improve surface finish and dimensional accuracy. During this operation, it is ensured that the diameter of the tool is exactly as per the mark value on the tool which is of particular tolerance. By tolerance, I mean the slight leeway that the tool has. Say, a hole with a diameter of 10 mm is to be drilled and a leeway or tolerance of about 0.01 mm is given. This means that the hole can be 10.01 mm or 9.99 mm. Anything more or less than the set limit will cause the component to be scrapped. During the finishing phase, we will be using higher spindle RPM and optimal feed rate and a very little material is chipped or removed. In the finishing phase, the object is made presentable and ready for use by adding all the, no point for guessing, finishing touches. What is the milling cutter? Although there are various types of tools that are used to perform these operations. For now, we'll focus on milling tools. A milling cutter is used to remove material from the component using the rotary motion. Basically, it moves in a circular motion and can be used for multitude of things like facing, slotting, contouring, etc. for a component. It can be used to manufacture gears and other various components. A milling tool can perform various operations such as face milling, gang milling, straddle milling, pocket milling and slotting. Generally, 
the milling cutter will be stationary and bed will be traversed based on the program to machine the component. During milling, a rotary tool is used to remove the material. The tool can be rotated in one axis or multiple axis to achieve the desired results. For example, three axis machines to five axis machines. Although these tools are generically called milling tools, they come in many forms and perform different functions. Let's take a look at some of the types of milling tools out there. End milling tools are designed for removing materials on both faces and walls. Next up is face milling tool that has a multi-point contact with the workpiece. Here, the point of contact is between inserts in the milling cutter and the workpiece. And it is the process of cutting surfaces perpendicular to the cutter axis or the faces of a part. Shoulder milling tools are similar to face milling tools except they can cut perfect 90 degree shoulders. They have two cutting edges in inserts and can remove material from two surfaces simultaneously. Groove milling tool, as the name suggests, is in charge of playing music and setting the mood. Just kidding. They are used to make grooves in a workpiece. The cutting portion of this type has a larger diameter than the shank to reach the cutting surface in the workpiece. As you can see, Milling tools contribute greatly through the roughing and finishing process. So, what exactly do these important tools consist of? Components of a milling tool. The top part of the tool is called shank. It is used to place the tool in the tool holder. These hollow cuts you see are called flutes. These profiles that you see are called flutes. Flutes act as a way for chips to get out. It guides the chips away from the workpiece. That way, the chips are generated while cutting don't come between the tool and workpiece as that would ruin the surface finish. Inserts are the sharp parts of the tool that cut through the workpiece. The number of inserts depends on the size of the cutter. These are the slots for the inserts that pretty much do what pockets are generally expected to do. Hold something. Inserts takes most of the force when machining. So, Insert pockets ensure that they don't loosen and move out of the place, thus maintaining the quality of the finish. Along with the maintaining the quality, the focus needs to be given to maintaining the temperature between the workpiece and the tool too. Due to the friction between the tool and the workpiece, the temperature of the workpiece and tool might increase. I know, I know. You must be thinking, these tools are not made of plastic. So. They definitely can withstand the heat and well, that is true, these materials can withstand massive amount of heat, but chances are that the workpiece may get deformed and lose dimensional accuracy. In other words, there will be meltdown and nobody wants that. This is why the machine needs to be kept fresh and at optimal temperatures. So we feed it some glucon D in the form of coolant solution. We provide a steady flow of a coolant to the machined area making sure the tools keep their cool. Components of steel, no, maybe iron, maybe. Now that we know what these components are, let's take a look at what they are made of. Depending on the function of the component, the material used to make it differs. It is very important that the parts be made with the right materials. They have to be resistant to intense heat and crack propagation, which they are very prone to because of the friction and the high speed they work at. So, the body is built with high speed steel or cemented carbide. These materials provide better heat and wear response than ordinary carbon steel. Inserts are made up of cement carbide that is a mixture of tungsten carbide and cobalt. The tool holders however are made of tungsten carbide, cobalt and aircraft steel grates because carbides are scratch resistant and durable. Importance of inserts. It is common to see face milling cutters without inserts, mostly in colleges, because you know they utilize a different tool, cost cutting. Contrary to popular belief, the face milling cutters with inserts are cost efficient and last longer compared to the conventional ones you might have come across in your college. Here is why. Conventional milling cutters have teeth and when any of them wear off or get knocked out, as the teeth sometimes do, the entire tool has to be replaced. But a face milling cutter that has inserts can just get new tooth. You can just replace the individual inserts if they wear off or get damaged. Also, we can adjust the inserts angle as per the finish you want. Modularity brings more options for adjustments in the tools 
which milling cutters with inserts bring to the workstation. Now that you know what a face milling cutter is, its components and what it's made of. Let's see how these milling cutters are actually sculpted into existence. The artist at work. The first step is to design the main body of the milling cutter. Once we complete the design, we will take the model to CAMP software to generate the NC code and simulate the machining process. We start with the machining operations plan. Based on the operations plan, we will decide the tools we needed. Once the tools are confirmed, we will generate the toolpath. This toolpath will be simulated to understand the movement of the tool. When the toolpath is finalized, we generate the G and M codes for machining the design model. The post processor will convert the toolpaths into G and M codes, which are called NC codes. Then, the NC code will be sent to a virtual machining validation software, where built-in machine models verify the sequences. Discrepancies like near miss collisions and inaccuracies in NC programs will be checked before the codes are sent to the machine. This way, we make sure that there is no problem on the shop floor. Once the code is verified in virtual machining validation software, they are fed into CNC machines where the codes get translated into the sequences of operations that we simulated in the CAM software. Regarding the machining operations which are performed, as you already know, the first phase in machining is the roughing process where the raw material is given a basic shape and structure. The raw material for a face milling cutter would be a cylindrical component, usually high speed steel. The diameter of the raw material should be more than the actual design. As a roughing process, excess material will be removed with a turning operation with the required speed and feed rate through multiple passes. Using the turning operations, we can machine the outer and inner cylindrical surfaces. Drilling will be done to create the inner holes. The insert slots and pockets can be machined using milling operation. A hole is drilled in the middle and the corner to where inserts will be fitted. After all roughing operations are completed, we will proceed to the second phase which is the finishing process. Once the finishing operations are done, we have to screw the inserts into pockets for which we need to tap the holes with the required tap diameter. Tapping operations are done to carve the threads inside the holes without which the inserts can't be screwed into place. The tapping dimensions will be determined by the standards listed with the inserts. Upon completion of the product, the tool engineer will fit the inserts in the slots and calibrate them for angle and distance from the workbase. And there you have it, a brand new milling tool to help modern day advancements made by yours truly, the cutting tool.